Good evening. evening. Welcome to St. Peter's. Uh, We are again without an organist uh, for this evening. Uh, So um, is Tom here? And we're not without Tom. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Well, uh, uh, Carol, you were in the choir, weren't you? Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll look to your leadership to start us off on on singing. Oh, here's Tom. Tom, uh, do you have do you have something for us to start the uh, the hymn? I mean, when we get to that point. We'll be fine. Okay, my my wife says it, we'll be fine. So I'm sure that that's what's going to happen. I'm an organist who'd like to play the hymn. On the organ. Oh, great. Uh, well, uh, do you want to go up there or? Great, great. Wow. My, my wife is more prophetic than I thought. <laughs> Pardon me? You owe her a big oh, I, I owe her. No. <laughs> I just. Uh, okay, so um, we'll begin with the, uh, the services printed out in your bulletin. And um, the rest of the liturgy, we're going to speak uh, like we've done the last two Wednesdays. So uh, please rise for the. O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King, who comes to save us. Our responsive reading for the psalm is uh, Psalm 126. We'll read it by verse. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first hymn.
The first lesson for this evening is taken from the 40th chapter of Isaiah, beginning with the first verse. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. All its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is taken from the fourth chapter of 1 Corinthians. This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself, for I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time, before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Then each one will receive his commendation from God. Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel lesson. From Matthew chapter 11. Now when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, He sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. And the dead are raised up and the poor have good news preached to them. And and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? When then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. 
This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Grace and peace be yours through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for this evening is taken from the first lesson for this day from Isaiah 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, through your good news, you bring your blessings in our lives. Help us as we deal with the challenges we face. Help us to keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen. I was a uh, freshman in college the summer that uh, my parents decided to take a little vacation up in Sturgeon Bay. He sent us ahead uh, to uh, take possession of the uh, cottage that we were going to rent for that week. He was going to join us the next day. And uh, we had a a wonderful week up there. Uh, The cottage was not on Lake Michigan, nor on Green Bay, but on the uh, waterway that connects the two bodies of water. Uh, But it was very nice and pleasant, and we found some interesting things around the cottage to do, and we found a a canoe uh, that uh, we thought, well, this would be nice to pull out and kind of paddle around in that uh, protected area that, uh, that connected the Green Bay and, and Lake Michigan. My dad showed up, I picked him up at the railroad station. and So the next day, my brother and I decided uh, that we were gonna go out canoeing. Um, fortunately, um, I had done some canoeing in summer camp probably enough to make me dangerous. Uh, My kid brother had not ever been in a canoe before, but he was looking forward to it. And uh, my dad came out and looked at what we were doing, and he says, you know, I don't think it's a good idea for you to go out. And uh, that's all he said. And uh, what what does he know? I'm I'm a freshman in college. I I know much better than he does. So uh, I quelled my brother's uh, concerns, and so we went out. We pushed the canoe out into the water. Uh, I was fortunate enough to take the back seat. Uh, I knew that's the the seat that you can steer the canoe. And uh, so we went out, and it was very pleasant. Uh, There was hardly a ripple in the water, and we're paddling along, and he's starting to get the hang of it, and I'm starting to recall some of the things that you're supposed to do with a canoe, and And we didn't even notice what was happening, but the wind started picking up from the the east, coming from the east, going west. And uh, pretty soon the the calm waters were getting a little rough, but it didn't concern us because it it sort of added to the kind of the funness of, uh, I'm sorry, it's not really a word, but it was fun just kind of bobbing around and and, uh, paddling to and fro. 
the stretch of water was maybe three quarters of a mile across uh, from shore to shore. And uh, as we're going along, the wind really started picking up. And now we're really kind of going up and down and sideways. And, and if you know anything about a canoe, they tip real easy. And uh, finally I said, hey, Rod, I think we better make it to shore. Things are getting a little worse here. And we started to go towards show, the shore, and then the wind got even more fierce. And we found ourselves being hit by the waves that were coming from the east. And we were trying to get to the shore. You could either go south or you could go north. That's where the shore was. And the waves were hitting our boat, our canoe. And we were getting very concerned that we're going to tip over. And that's not the place we wanted to get off, is right in the middle of that water. So we found ourselves actually trying to paddle that canoe into the waves. Because if we went the other direction, we'd flip over. We knew that was going to happen. So we were going into the waves. And it was like a roller coaster. You're going up and down like this. And uh, frankly, I, I was very concerned. And what came to my mind just at that instant was this, this painting that I had seen on the classroom wall where I went to school, grade school. It's St. Luke's Itasca, a Lutheran school there. And it was called Christ Our Pilot. Maybe you recall it. It shows Jesus behind a young man who is at the, the tiller of a ship. And you can see in the background that there's a storm going on. And I felt, boy, this is really speaking to me at that time. It was a wild and exciting time of fear and remembering my dad saying, I don't think you should go out. And well, I'm here so you know that that wasn't the end of the story. But that picture was such a comfort to me at that time to know that we're not here alone God is with us. He cares for us. Because that's exactly how Israel felt. In Isaiah's day, Israel had done kind of the same thing, except it was a whole lot worse. They decided that they weren't going to listen to God. They were just going to go their own way. They knew what God had said. They heard it in the temple. They heard it in their, in their gatherings as they studied. But they decided to go their own direction. And Israel was not in a position to really think they could handle things. They were surrounded by enemies. And of course, the Babylonians would come in and uh, defeat Israel. Uh, in Isaiah's day, it's the Assyrians who destroy the, the northern part of Israel, taking the 10 tribes into captivity. Uh, this was the result of their disobedience to, to God. And yet Isaiah is called by God to give comfort to Israel. Say to Israel, the Lord is still with you. In fact, God's grace is going to be so great that he will give double in proportion to the sins you have committed. Not not a reward, mind you. They were going to be punished. They would suffer punishment. But God's grace was such that he would double his grace to them and that he would save them. That was Isaiah's message. Comfort, comfort my people. I am thinking of how God comforts us. In our challenging times, it feels sometimes like we are on a roller coaster. Crisis after crisis seems to come into our life, or problem after problem after problem hits us. And we're on a wild ride and we can't get off. We need comfort. And that comfort comes through our Heavenly Father, who cares for his people, who 
promises to hear our prayers, to comfort us with his grace, to assure us that we are not alone. But in order for that to happen, we need to repent. We need to say our sorrow over our sin, not not be cozy with our sins. Too many of us are just too cozy with our sins. We don't really think they are life-threatening. We have somehow made peace with them, and so we still have them around. We're not that repentant. And so as Isaiah said, level the fields, level the mountains, make way for the Lord to come into your lives. Through repentance, we do that. But we also know that it is the power of God to overcome all the obstacles we seem to throw up so that he can come to us with his forgiveness and with his grace. I remember at the seminary, one of the professors that summer had attended the um, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod Synodical Convention in San Francisco. That was a long time ago. And as he was checking into the hotel that he was at, he saw all these little brochures of what to do in San Francisco. And one in particular caught his eye. It was entitled, uh, Where to Sin in San Francisco. Oh, he had to get that one. You know, he knew that this was going to be a good illustration for his class. But what it said was, you know, here are all the really nice places in San Francisco where you can get a terrific meal or a terrific show. Or... Sin there was used not as it normally should be, that is, an offense to God. They thought sin here was something like, oh, isn't that sinfully delicious? That kind of sin. Making friendliness with a sin. He knew that that is how so many people look at sin. Not terrified that they are offending God, but that this is something I enjoy doing. In 17th century, or 16th, 18th century France, the royals had a fad for a short time, and that was to uh, wear a beauty mark. That is what looked like a, a mole, either on the right or the left side of the mouth. It was a fad. And uh, some people, of course, used a kind of a cosmetic thing to kind of paste it on their skin. But some people had natural moles, and they seemed to be the lucky ones because they didn't have to go through any cosmetic thing to put it on. But little do they know that that mole could be cancerous, that you could get melanoma, that you could die from it. No, they just thought it was a fad. They thought, oh, isn't this beautiful? They just didn't know. They did not understand the fatality that sin brings into our life. Another uh, professor that I knew, his name was Aho. He was a Navy chaplain during World War II. And he was assigned to a Marine unit. And uh, they hit the beaches out in the Pacific uh, on one of their missions. And uh, they were fired upon. Uh, one of the uh, Marines in their unit was known as Ratso. Now, it's not exactly an affectionate sounding sort of name, and it wasn't really meant to be affectionate. Uh, not that he looked like a rat, but he always ratted out other people. He was always trying to get other people in trouble. And so he was not very well liked at all. Well, he caught around. The medic came to see him uh, in the battlefield and knew instantly that this was a mortal wound. There was really, they, they couldn't do anything about it. He called uh, Pastor Aho, who was uh, the chaplain, to come over. And he says, you know, I still remember what he said to me. He said, can I, can I still be forgiven? 
a time to hear the good news. Yes, you have a loving God that forgives your sins, if you but just confess. If you look to him for that forgiveness and in the name of Christ accept it, he was fortunate. He had time to prepare to receive the grace of God. Others are less fortunate. One of the longest uh, tunnels in the Western Hemisphere is the Moffat Tunnel. Uh, if you've ever driven around Denver, you know, gone over the mountains, you did not take the Moffat Tunnel. It's a railroad tunnel. And in 1928, when they built that tunnel, the uh, master engineer uh, decided that he was going to take a little different approach. He set one team on the western side of this mountain that they were trying to put that tunnel through, a tunnel 6.2 miles long. And he told them to dig. He kept giving them instructions on the direction to dig. He had the second team coming from the east and that the plan was that they would meet somewhere in the middle. Now, most of the men who were working on this job uh, kind of uh, looked, you know, their eyes went up to the sky, you know, like, oh, sure, this is gonna work out well. But when they came together, do you know that they were not even one inch difference in the tunnel? They had met that close. It was touted in the 1920s, late 1920s, as a, a marvel of engineering. It's nothing compared to how God meets us. He finds us. He speaks to us. He comes to us with a good word. He forgives our sins. He meets us where we are. Doing a tunnel, at least the mountain isn't moving while you're trying to dig. We're constantly moving. And yet God finds us, brings us the good news that in Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. In Christ Jesus, he has a life for you. That's the loving grace of God for all of us. In our hectic times, we need some rest. And what a better place to rest than in Christ? After the first uh, midweek Wednesday service we had, one of the members said to me, you know, this was nice. He said, I really needed some rest. Now, I did notice that through the whole service, especially during the sermon, he, his eyes were still open. So that wasn't quite the rest that he, you, you could think he was referring to. No, he just liked to get out of this hectic world around him, the swirling mess around him, and just be with God to rest in his grace. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise as uh, we join together in speaking the Magnificat. Together. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For he, behold, from this day will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, 
and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the gift of divine peace and pardon with all our hearts and with all our minds, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, for the proclamation of the gospel, for the call to Reverend David Totsky to be our pastor, for missionary Leaf Camp, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. for this nation and protection from harm, especially those suffering from fires and storms, for our civic leaders, that they administer justice and good citizenship, for a peaceful transition in government, for prosperity, for the end of the pandemic, for the common welfare of us all, Lord, in your mercy, for seasonable weather, Lord, in your mercy. For those who labor, for all those who travel, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, especially Lisa, Lucas, and Beth, Sonia, Wendy, Kristen, Shelby, Cindy, Monica, Andrew, Krista, Devin, Mary, Julie, Kim, Dr. Bess, Rhonda, Heather, Dr. Ryan, Greg, Sandy, and Tim, and those who are essential workers. For those in need, for those seeking employment, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and those who must raise their children alone, especially those who face great burdens, for the orphaned, for those in prison, Lord, in your mercy, for the homebound, for the sick and dying, and those who care for them, especially Pastor Bill Mitchke and his wife, Pastor Bill Corman, Pastor Bernie Fick, Pastor Chris Antonelli, uh, Pastor Loy Schulte, Robert Shermer, Ann, Debbie, Declan, Jackie, Lois, Joseph, Michelle, Anita, Colette, Joe, Norma, Marion, Nathan, Beverly, Justin, Seal, Matthew, Phyllis, Dorothy, Liz, Roland, Dr. Nitten and Staff, Nancy, and Rod. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who departed in the faith, grant the comfort of the resurrection to those who mourn, especially the family of Glenn Fritchell. Lord, in your mercy. For those who celebrate birthdays, especially uh, Michaela, Tanner, Chad, Nancy, Madeline, Diane, Jenna, Rich, and Susan, and those celebrating uh, wedding anniversaries, especially Steve and Kathy and Scott and Beth. Lord, in your mercy. To your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the closing hymn. We'd like to uh, thank our really guest organist here. Uh, can you give us your name? No. Mantino? Bantino with a B? Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. Were, were you just visiting? Everybody here probably knows you, and I'm the only one. Uh, are you just passing through, visiting, or what? Okay, well. Oh, ah, okay. okay. Well, we are most fortunate, and I'm, I know that God, uh, looking out for us, uh, directed you here for just this. And maybe more, who knows? Thank you so much.